Hey YouTube. Now what we have is the ultimate bicycle accessory. It's a bicycle trailer. This happens to be the Bob B.O.B. Ibex trailer. Um, connects onto the back axle of the, of the bicycle. It uh, carries 70 pounds. It's got a little mono shock back here so when you're off road you can dampen the amount of vibration that, that the trailer creates when it's going down the road. Obviously it's got a large pneumatic tire, well, I won't call it large, but it has a, a pneumatic tire for the back. Just a single tire, which is nice, especially if you're off-roading and going through the trails. There's a lot of YouTube videos out here that show these guys taking these trailers, just putting them through heck out on these, you know, mountain trails in the mountains and things like that. They're very solid, very well built. But two years ago... <clears throat> I came up with an idea for putting a fishing rod holder on it and I said because I was filming that in the winter I said I'd come back when it was summer out well two years later here it is the beginning of the summer hi Jack come here boy ah, he doesn't like the sound it makes but anyway um, I had cut the PVC one and a half inch or one and a quarter inch standard 40 um, tubes on here I painted them with some Krylon put paint design specifically for plastic and PVC and then I took the ends both ends top and bottom and I dipped them in that plier material um, you know that you can rubberize the, the handles of your pliers with that way these sharp edges wouldn't tear up the fishing rods once we got them on the trailer does come with a little tear down yellow flag that you can put together goes right in a little spot right here on the end that way if you're out riding along the road or something you've got a flag out here to get people's attention behind you again it just goes right onto the clips right onto the back axle of the bike the trailer itself came with this large dry bag that you can put just tons and tons and tons of stuff in kind of amazing fits right down inside but if you wanted to go and do a long distance bicycle ride go camping out in the mountains whatever the case may be you could fill this thing up right here um, and again you know just flip it over you roll it over a few times you get your edges back tight and you know you can get this thing put back together so that everything on the inside stays dry I have used it on several occasions it does work nothing's ever gotten wet on the inside but for today's purposes um, I think what we'll do is we'll just go ahead and convert this into the fishing apparatus that uh, that my wife and I use it for now bushcrafting yes you could use it for that prepping you bet absolutely put your dry stuff down in here pile a bunch of other stuff your tents your know your other equipment on top uh, whether you use the dry bag or not, that's pretty much an option that's available to you. Um, I know it's entirely up to you how you apply it, but this trailer is versatile. It'll do a lot of things. What I'll do is I'll cut away for a second, come back, and then I'll zoom in and we'll show you how it hooks onto the back of the bike. Stay with me. All right, you'll see how this has got a cut out here, and that has to go over this particular part of this axle and this just free spins here it is an axle designed specifically for the trailer so basically you'll just come up and over the top sets right down inside of that does it on both sides now notice this rubber piece here this comes around there's a hole that's drilled from here and goes back to this tab as well what you do is you put this little hook in if I can find the hole slides through you probably see that little the little nipple sticking out there and then this part just bends down connects behind that mushroom now the trailer will not come free of the axle which is kind of an important aspect when you're going down the road you definitely do not want your trailer to come loose but that's how simply that attaches and how solidly that attaches to the back axle stay with me and I'll back her back out all right guys that's what it looks like when she's all hooked up together I'll come around here and as you can see it just sits right in line with everything else 
kick you. That's one of the reasons why I have this split kick stand on here. And now that trailer will go anywhere that bicycle goes. It leans with you uh, with that single tire in the back. So you're going around a turn. It's like having a passenger on the back of a motorcycle or on the back of your bicycle. Uh, really, really works out well together. Uh, it is just phenomenal. Once you're, it's a little tricky. I mean, you got to get that first pedal in and pump pretty good. Um, but once you're rolling, you don't even really notice that the trailer's back there. Um, now, when you put a full 70 pounds on it and you go up a hill, yep, you're going to start, you know, you're going to feel that extra weight back there. But as far as ride and stability is concerned, it is amazing how much of a non-event that actually is. Anyway, um, what I'll do now is I'll load this up with the fishing gear, show you what all we put on there, um, what we like to take with us. We've got a little creek about, I don't know, a quarter mile from where we live. And uh, we'll go down there, we'll hop off the trail, we'll set up our chairs, we'll do a little fishing. Can't take you down there today because we're, it's been in the 50s for a week now. Today it's in the 60s. We've had 10 inches of snow, 12 in some places that's melted. The frost is coming out of the ground and frankly, if you're not on the rock and you're not in the concrete, you're sinking down in the mud here right now. But we'll do some later this year when it dries out a little bit, we'll show that out. Stay with me and I'll show you how we pack it up to go fishing. All right, guys, we've got two coolers, a tackle box, two chairs, and over by the benches over there, I'll see if I can zoom in. I've got four fishing poles standing up and ready to show you how they attach to the back of the trailer. Uh, it's one spin casting and three bait casting. Sorry, one spin caster, one reel, um, like a Zebco, and then two bait casters over there. And we'll, we'll put them over here on the trailer into those, into those nifty little holders that I made and attached to the side there. And we'll show you what she looks out, what she looks like when she's loaded out to go fishing. Okay guys, from here, you can see that the front of the trailer is a little bit wider than the rear of the trailer. Which is actually another good aspect of that too. Because then it's not as wide as, you, it's about as wide as your handlebars. Not much wider than your shoulders or your elbows when you're out riding. So, if you know that if you can squeeze through it with your handlebars, you know the trailer itself is going to fit through that same opening. So if you're blazing a trail and you're not sure, you can be pretty much rest assured that, you know, it's going to fit through there and you're not going to hang up on it. And that's even including the fishing rod holders. Might be a touch wider, but if it is, it's like an inch or so. So just some things to bear in mind. The other thing I did when I angled the fishing rod holders was that I didn't want the fishing rods to be, you know, really any taller than my head with a helmet on when I'm sitting on the seat pedaling the bicycle. I think I've got that within, you know, an inch or two of, of that particular goal. So, you know, that's why those rod holders are not standing straight up because I didn't want, you know, six feet of fishing rod sticking up as I'm trying to go along a trail on a creek bed or riding around the edges of a lake or something like that. So hopefully that'll all come together. Now, give me a minute here and we'll start loading all of the stuff on board and then we'll take the bike and we'll go for a ride. Stay with me. Okay, guys, now we'll see if we can get two small coolers, a tackle box, two chairs, and four fishing rods mounted up on that. When I bought the trailer, it came with this particular set of bungees, which is nice. There's some flanges right here with some holes drilled in it, which are good places to locate the ends of the bungee cord. They can hook in around the frame up here at the top to hold things down. Um, I do have several other bungee cords, varying lengths. You can buy them in packages. You know, you get a half a dozen or better of these for you know a couple of bucks. Uh, Harbor Freight has tons of them. Uh, they're not the highest quality bungee cords I've ever seen. But what the heck, for that kind of price, who cares? One thing I did do is I took a piece of uh, shop matting and the kind that you can, you know, put several sections together. I traced out the bottom of the, the, the cart with it because it's just got this metal bottom here, which is an expansion metal type thing. And I did just cut it to fit and I lay it in there. 
cuts down on the rattling tremendously. I do need to punch a couple holes through here and just maybe do a little zip tie and, and secure it to the bottom. Um, you know, on one hand, I think I want to do that. On the other hand, I kind of like being able to take it up. That way, if it gets wet, I can dry it off, air it out. Haven't really decided exactly what I'm going to do with that. Usually, once I've got everything loaded in here and the weight and everything, and then it's bungeed down, we're in good shape. All right. So what I've been doing is I've been taking my tackle box because it's wider than the trailer is right through here. But if I angle it and put it in that direction, it fits right up here in the opening just fine, okay? So far I haven't had an issue and I'm not making as tight a turn as, as it would take to actually get this to hit the frame and stuff. Although I've come close a couple of times, but again, it's not going to rub on the tire because of the way this frame wraps around the back of the, the bicycle tire. Can't put two of them in like that. Not quite wide enough to put two of them in side by side, but they fit nicely like this. Technically, I tend to run them off to the side. The Cabela's camp chairs that my wife was kind enough to pick up for us on sale one day. Tend to fit up here nicely. You want to take the extra material for the shoulder straps and make sure that it's controlled. These are nice in that they've got these little clamps down here. So you can set them off like this. Again, you've got this shoulder strap material. So you want to make sure that it's tied off good preferably up above the seat that way it doesn't work its way back down and get in you know caught up in everything now with it like this it tends to get caught up on this fishing rod holder so i'm going to put them up here like this now i can just simply take hook this through one of those holes on that flange do that on both sides hooked up here now I can come straight up over the top I can cross I can adjust this ring a little bit and adjust where the bund where this makes the the axe and I can come back out and hook up here Oop. I can come back over here hook up on the inside of the frame where this frame rail runs down the side here keeps that from sliding any further back. Now I've got everything secured in here and it's not going anywhere. I can adjust, make sure. One of the things I like to do, because I've got plenty of them, is I'll take another bungee cord, hook it right in next to this one, wrap it right over the top, bring it down and put it on the frame rail over there that way I can hold the the top of this down too. keep these from uh, jumping out of the trailer so there's just a thousand ways you can configure this I can run through the handles you know a lot of different things but that's pretty darn secure like that now for the fun part the fishing rods I cut these out here so that the handles, be it the thumb portion, or if it's actually the real portion itself, can fit down inside there. In this particular case, I can flip it over, leave it like that. I can put it down in here, get it a little bit more secure that way. The other rod, for example, can fit down in here like this. Sometimes you have to adjust the handle. And then that'll slide all the way down in there. That'll stay nice and tight. Again, we can put and slide that bait casting rod in here like that. Or we can take the old Zebco Put it in. We can flip it over if we want those outside. 
can do this any way you want. Depends on the rod, depends on the reels as to how you're going to get it to actually sit down inside there, okay? You can set it up so that it rides on the inside. You can set it up so it rides on the outside. Either way is going to be fine. Probably put this one like this. Maybe angled slightly. I could hold it like that. I can set it up like this right here. Now I am going to have to be careful of these while I'm on the trail. So don't write me and comment about it. Yep, I'm pretty familiar with that already. One thing you can do, and I've kind of set it up as a safety, is you can reach down and put a bungee cord over top and hook it down, okay? You can run it up around the top of this and go up through that opening and create a little bit more tension. If it gets to be too tight, you can hook onto the horseshoe clamps or the pipe clamps that I've put on the side here. That way you can secure your, your fishing gear and ensure that nothing gets lost along the way. Again, you can hook clear down here, come over the top. That's a little too tight, so I'll just bring it up beside it, right over the top, hook it down. Now, I'm not going to lose any of these fishing rods along the way. So that's what she looks like when it's configured in the fishing configuration. We'll zoom back out a little bit here. Kind of give you an idea of what the whole shooting match looks like. Excuse the camera, guys. But now she's set up and ready to go for a massive fishing adventure. I'm going to tie down the other two rods. I'll get the bike out front. And uh, I'll show you what it looks like going down the road. Stay with me. All right, guys. What I've done is I've secured the fishing rods. You can kind of see the uh, bungee cords that go over it. So I've got everything squared away. I've got it set up. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to ride down the street, come on back, show you what it's, what it's like. I will tell you this much. When you're standing here like this, 15 to 20 degrees doesn't have any impact. You get over that, you start to feel the weight of everything that's back there. So when you first take off, make sure that first pedal is a good power pedal. So we'll just give her a heck and we'll see what happens. So kids, as it turns out, beautifully <laughs> you can tell it you know wasn't a difficult procedure to make the turns it's absolutely great one thing um, get a good set of pedals on here I'm riding with just basic standard pedals I have clip-ons but if I'm gonna go fishing I don't want to have to wear my biking shoes so put regular pedals on it you can go anywhere you can do anything all right guys I'm going to go give it a little bit more of a test. We'll see you out on the trails. 